Hello, ladies and gentlemen, it's Mike here at Game from Scratch, and today I'm going to demonstrate some, frankly, awesome software to you. This one is, like, as if, let's say, Substance Designer, Substance Painter, Quixel Mega Scans, and Material Maker all got together and had a baby. Especially if you tossed in a little bit of, say, Geometry Nodes and Houdini into the mix, that's what you get. A super tool for material creation and placement called Instamat. Now, Instamat may sound somewhat familiar. These guys actually make InstaLOD, uh, which is a level of detail software out there. Uh, this is actually built on top of the LOD platform. And actually, they have a game engine in development as well, but I'm getting way ahead of myself. We'll talk about that one later on. What we were talking about today is Instamat. And now what I'm going to do is try and demonstrate Instamat to the best of my abilities, and I'm going to fail massively because there is just so much to this program. And I've been playing around with it for a couple of days now. It just released last week, and quite frankly, there's so much here. So you're going to notice right away, when you create a new project, you've got a couple of different options. You've got um, placement options right here. So you can, these two, it's kind of like if you were using uh, Quixel for actually uh, layering up shapes and images, etc. But first, we're going to start with actually creating a material. You also have these other options down here, such as Atom Graph and Function Graph. And you can think of this as creating your own nodes. This is super node-based software. And I'll get back to that in just a sec. We're going to go ahead and create a new one. you got a couple of options here. You can have it create a PBR style material for you. You can have it create like the simplest material you've ever seen. Or you can just create it without a project. We'll start off with a simple PBR style material. So this is going to set up the grid or the rig we need to see to create create such a beast. So what you see here, this network of nodes goes together. So you got a hexagonal pat plat uh, pattern being applied to a height, uh, a blend height, and then the icon is brought in as an image. You mix them all together. You take the height map to an ambient occlusion map. You plug that into the ambient occlusion map over here. You're creating a material on the fly, and then you're passing it through a couple of effects. So here we're putting a effect for dirt, dust, uh, finalizing the material, and then what we're doing is basically splitting it out into a number of different outputs. Now, the really cool thing about this is all of these nodes are node-centric, so these outputs can then be brought into another node and then used as an import. Or what you can do is go ahead and see the end result of what you created. So there is the material we just created using that graph of node. Now, remember early on I told you about atoms? Well, basically everything that we see in this list, all of the stuff going on over here, each one of these is basically a atom network of nodes. So what you can see is, like, for example, blend. A blend is a pretty fundamental part of a tool like this. Well, what it can do is basically, I can open that one up, and the blend is actually implemented using this node-based, sort of like blueprints type programming language. You can see all the various different pieces that go together to create this. This is how a blend works. This is the logic for creating your own nodes that can then be used. So you can create and extend these nodes to your heart's content, which is super powerful stuff. But then I can come back here and we can just take a look at this guy over here. I could take any particular pin. So for example, here I have um, this icon. So we got this image coming in for this icon. So let's go ahead and we will drop that pin there so there's nothing feeding in and we're going to come here and as I drop this out you're going to get a quick rundown of the options that are available for that pin so I could do things to it like I could swirl it let's do that so we're going to swirl our icon get a preview of what it'll do so let's go ahead and we'll swirl it and there you go so you can take this in and then we'll input that into the blend here and there immediately you see the result that you've changed here. Now in terms of uh, the amount of nodes that are available, it is staggeringly high. So here you can see all the various different groups that are available and there's some really impressive things you can do here. For example, I could actually drop a full 3D renderer into the scene. Uh, we can see here we could do things like geometry nodes, we can do point clouds, we can bring in a 3D mesh if we want or a mesh array and you can work on full like geometry nodes like blender style geometry nodes stuff as well. Like I said, I'm not even going to get into like 99% of the functionality of this guy. I just want to give you a quick overview and then you can give an idea if this is a good fit for you or not but on top of that all of this stuff here it actually comes with a ton of materials to find out of the box too so i come in here to the material section and you see let's say i wanted to use um uh, a fabric let's do leather so i want to do a leather uh fine leather vintage leather vintage grain leather sure We'll drop that one in right there. So you've got this network of node that I could then now use anywhere. So I could blend that into something else right here. So let's blend our foreground here into this guy right here. And then you can see the immediate result of that. Well, the cool thing here is this 
is an entire um, node graph. So here is what everything went together to create that leather. So all of these materials are created out of these network of graphs. So you could create your own material and then drop it in. But what is going to stagger you is just how much customizability you have over these defined materials that come in it. So if we go here, the final output of this, so the material finalized, the end result of this guy is giving us this material right here. So it gives you an idea of the capabilities of what you can do with these procedural graphs. Well, what I can do is I can take this guy and we can do um, special abilities with it. So for example, here, let me go back to it over here. Where did you go? All right, it's this guy. Go back to here. This is where I dropped my leather in. You're going to notice I have a lot of control over the leather. So I can change the, um, the roughness of the leather here, get immediate feedback on that there as well. I can change the grain levels. On uh, some of these, you can even do destruction of them, or I can change the amount of dirt or dust that is being accumulated on it. So I could change the amount right there. Some of them you can even destroy, and it will show you an underlying fabric below it, or it might have like buttons or zippers or whatever, and they can be brought off as well. So that is how you bring these, make these entire networks of nodes, and then all of these various different nodes that are built in, and then all these special effects that can be applied to these nodes. Uh, all of the things that you would expect in terms of if we want to place decals on the system so again here we got a bunch of bolts and cracks and so on and then again you can go back to the liar the level underneath like you see here and you can use this atom level script and create your own nodes to your heart's content so if you are a nodes first kind of person this program is going to you're going to fall in love with it now on top of that we go back over here let's do another new project here so what we saw there that was an element graph and then you saw from the blend that was an atom graph and then you can do function graphs for atom graphs this is basically small functions that can be reused across atom graphs so this is even more granular level control but we also have a couple of options over here i'm going to show you this one first this is pretty straightforward this is materialized image so what you can actually do is take an image so let's go um here let me just do a new tab and i'll go to uh, free pick.com. And let's say I have a graphic like um, cobblestone, All right? So I got some kind of a texture I'm bringing in, like, like this guy right here. I'm, I'm not cherry picking anything. Literally go ahead and download that one. So cobblestone to stone JPEG. We'll head on back over here and we're going to pick that as our image. So I'm going to pick local file. I do wish it used the uh, native uh, dialogues, by the way, which this is when available for uh, Windows and Mac. Uh, if you're interested, so here, uh, cobblestone, there. So we got our default material brought in. And what you can do here is I actually covered a tool called Materialize a couple of years ago. Basically, this will create um, all the various different channels from our material. So there is our source, and here is our rendered result. And what this will do is it will create all of the various different maps. So base map, a normal map, a roughness map, a metal map, an AME occlusion map for that particular material. And then of course you've got control over how all of these things work. Uh, so you got control over all these things. Again, normal map to use it, to not use it, how much to control over it there. But basically what you do with Materialize is you can have it generate a PBR texture from a single image. Just a neat, neat little powerful tool that's built on top of that. And then we head on back over here, do the other options here. You've got layering and material layering so they can kind of this is an artist artist centric approach to the same thing so let's go ahead and we'll start a project that way so here you go uh you've got your shapes in the world so you pick a, basically an object from your library so either a shape that you've already created or we can come down to their presets like here so let's go animals dragon skin and we'll drop this dragon scales blue in and so there is our default shape with the blue dragon skin like so. And then what you can actually do is I could come in here and switch out to, um, uh, let's say, I suppose I could do a layer of decals on top. So we could drop a decal in here and we could change that out and layer it appropriately. So you come down here at Photoshop style. What I could have done is a new layer right here. So a new, uh, element brush, I guess we'll call it. Uh, pick your material on there, drop that in. You can go accordingly. And then the thing you're going to notice here is you've got Photoshop style controls about how that layer is going to render over other things. Over here, you can apply special effects to those images there. And then obviously you can place them and move them in the world. It kind of gives you an idea of the capabilities of this guy. So it's using like a Quixel Mixer style world. So you could have um, like a, a 3D effect or a 3D shape in here. Uh, let's go and show you the other one really quickly. So let's go here to the straight layering. Another thing I'm going to do at this point in time is use one of the built-in 3D meshes that's available. So here, tombstone mesh, sure, multi-material. Um, 
or we could use their built here. We'll use their trait. All right, so here you can see another option. So if you bring in your own 3D object, so you see here it's set it up in the various different layers. So uh, decal layers there, accent colors, and so on. And then we can basically start creating it that way. So I could drop in something like, um, let's go over to the material, and we're going to change this material out to, I don't know, wood. Let's find a wood. Uh, aged natural, and we'll just drop that into place. And there you see it comes in accordingly. Now you got the ability to actually filter down uh, where the wood is applied. So I could say it only going to apply to certain things. So here, let me go ahead and do another one. So let's go here back to the metal uh, and we'll do, I don't know, wrought iron fence and we'll drop that onto the latch here. So what we can do is, so you see now it is applying right there. You can actually set the masks to apply uh, very, via various different layers over here. So with the wrought iron fence, I go to the mesh mask underneath it, and I just pick which named item I want to apply it to. So I could have it the handles, buckles, or the body, or the wherever, which, whichever area I want it to actually apply to, do it by filter, or you could also do it by name. Or I can just click here and say, click thing in and I can basically pick the item that that mask will apply to. So you've got a lot of placement options. So again, you could bring in um, an actual logo on top, place them and move them around, etc. So if you've used, again, Quixel Mixer, it gives you that kind of functionality here as well. Uh, it's just a very multifaceted program for doing a ton of different things. But at the new, at the very, very root of it all, you have this atom level stuff. So you can use this to program just about any kind of logic that you wish. And then you build those up into your own little network of materials. Again, the materials are 100% reusable. Like you can see, I could grab any material out here, bring it in, and then mix it in with another material. Again, there's entire even 3D renders, and impressively enough, the 3D renderer. So if I came up here, I search, uh, let's say, I think it's a mesh renderer. So search for mesh. Okay, that didn't filter down. But there is actually a full mesh rendering technology built in here as well. Uh, so where did you go? So here, let me just do this. Mesh renderer All right here. So I can actually take any 3D object and drop it in like so. So any, I could bring a 3D model in like this. So I could come over here and we could do actual, so there's 3D models that are actually built in here. Like so, so I could bring in a 3D model like this, drop it into my mesh render. Now the impressive thing here is even this 3D mesh renderer that you're seeing right here, which I can actually, again, control the lighting of, the, the rotation around it. I could bring in an environment map to control how it's handled and so on. But I can actually, uh, again, this guy right here, this entire thing, drill down into it, it is written using the same scripting language. So they've actually, you can use the built-in element uh, atom scripting stuff to create a 3D renderer in this guy. So that gives you an idea of exactly what it is capable of. And then you're gonna notice the outputs are here, these two guys right there, and it's gonna just take those outputs and whatever nodes you're gonna use it will contextually know what the outputs were. So this guy can be extended to do just about whatever you like. It is super, super amazingly impressive how this works. Again, so I can drop this guy in here, there, render it accordingly. I can drop again the normal map in for rendering it. And there you see the end result of our quick little mesh renderer there. And then I can bring this guy out into, again, a variety of mesh tools here. So if I wanted to do like an array or a, a scatter on surface or whatever, I can do so. So I could, uh, again, you see a number of different um, mesh manipulation uh, abilities available there. So I could do, uh, again, I could turn this into a point cloud if I wish to do so and then do various things with the point cloud. Uh, it, it's... Uh, it's impressive. So again, you've got geometry nodes type functionality built in there. You have this uh, node-based shadering network built in there. You have the ability to do um, 3D placement and texturing support, by the way, with UDIM support as well, like you would see from, um, again, Quixel, a mixer kind of projects. Uh, you've got the ability to um, place 
scenes together and then kind of layer them. This was kind of a poor example, but I could have done like uh, a ground level with moss and then had some water in the cracks and so on. So you can do the blending of all those things right there. And again, you can save these projects and use them in other aspects of what you are working on. It is super impressive in that regard. And again, I'm doing a very, very cursory demonstration of what this guy is capable of because there's just so much functionality there. Uh, so if you're the type of person that likes to play with nodes and you were looking for a new material creation tool, this is one you definitely need to consider checking out. And that's the best part that I'm going to end on. We get into the pricing. And the cool thing here is they have a very nice licensing. So basically, uh, if you are uh, making less than 100 grand a year, you can get this guy completely for free, which is very cool. Now, the process of getting it is a bit of a pain in the butt because you're still getting a license. You got to sign out for it, go through the store, buy it. You don't have to give them any kind of um, credit information or anything like that, but you do need to create an account uh, and have it guaranteed. And then you, you have licenses to manage and so on. So this is a bit tricky, uh, but the cool thing here is this one is the Pioneer license. If you make less than 100K, completely free. Otherwise, you get into seat licensing, uh, anywhere from uh, 10 bucks a month uh, upwards to uh, 489 uh, for a perpetual license for individuals and startups or $1,000 for businesses. For those of you then that like to buy their software outright, a perpetual license gives you that ability. And then finally, we have the business license there. So it all kind of comes down to what category you're in. Uh, but as you can see, the pricing is very, very fair in my humble opinion. Uh, and this uh, Pioneer license means that as long as you make less than 100 grand, you can go and check it out. Now, I do wish that they had a, oh, no, I guess that they do have an evaluation license available as well. So if you want to go ahead and check this one out and you don't fit that category, you should be able to get there as well. And then the cool thing here is we've also got integration uh, into a number of different tools. So there's a C++ SDK available out there. Uh, it can work with Unreal, a Unity, and so on. So there's plugins for a number of different game engines out there. Uh, again, you're going to see the pricing is definitely going up. So if you're a AAA studio and you want to integrate this directly into your game, the pricing is much higher. But you do have all of that fun functionality there. But again, the price it does change if you need to have this integration into your game engines. Uh, it goes up, it definitely goes up, but uh, that, that ability is there. And also do keep in mind, this does get you licenses for up to 25 developers on your team. So a uh, very broad number of licensing for all numbers of people. Ladies and gentlemen, that was Instamat. And if I can close for something, I would say that this is really just showing the tip of the tip of the iceberg. This is one of those programs that the more you know it, the more you can get out of it. You can really think of it as like a procedural texture creation kit. Uh, also kind of procedural 3D geometry creation kit on top of that, but there is so much more to this. There's Unreal Engine, Unity, etc. game engine integration in there that I haven't covered on. There is so much more to what you can actually do and create with individual textures. In fact, uh, again, I'm scraping the surface of what this guy is capable of. Would you be interested in seeing like a more in-depth hands-on of like, here's how you would create a material and the kind of functionality that you can work with video at some point in the future. I just want you to know that this guy exists, how powerful it is. If you've been looking for a, an alternative to substance a designer, uh, again, there's Material Maker, which I am a huge fan of, which is free and open source, and I would highly recommend you checking out. But this is next level. I, I was actually super impressed with what Instamat is capable of, and I, I wanted to show it to you, even if I didn't show it to you in the best manner possible, because it's just staggering what this guy is capable of doing. And yeah, what do you think? Did you check it out? And would you like to see more hands-on, practical demonstration of what this program is all about? Let me know that in the comments down below and I'll talk to you all later. Goodbye.